Okay, so the book I reviewed is this book here. It is Game Design Workshop by Tracy Fullerton. <clears throat> game Design Workshop outlines what Fullerton calls the play-centric approach to game design. So he describes this approach as feedback-based and iterative, meaning the designer makes and tests many, many variations based on the feedback that they receive. The designer in Fullerton's eyes is an advocate for the player, and the experience of the audience is paramount consideration. There might be many, many things that go into the player experience, but that's what sits and what ends up being, like, way on top. And there are many, many things Fullerton covers in this book. Her goal is to guide the player from the moment they say, Hey man, wouldn't it be neat if horses in Skyrim could fly? To their big debut. She really covers everything you could think of, and several things you probably didn't, from cheap and easy prototyping to how to choose and approach a publisher. So, uh, the down and dirty. The book is divided into two basic sections, Fullerton's workshop and interviews and essays by designers of all kinds of games. Things I liked. The book really is a workshop, as it says on the cover. She breaks the process down almost step by step, but in a very universal way. Uh, what are the objectives? What is the interface? How is it challenging? So that you can apply the critical thinking that she leads the audience into, into almost any type of game. The book isn't geared toward any one genre or even digital games for that matter. Fullerton also provides the reader with numerous exercises they can apply to whatever game they might be working on. Uh, these cover a broad range as the rest of the material in the book, and they are by no means minute or trite and quick and easy. Early on, she encourages creating and workshopping paper prototypes in order to think about mechanics, and later the exercises could be something like design the box art and think about marketing. Um, a lot of space is given over to examples and breaking down games and systems that the audience might be familiar with, which, in my opinion, is great. It's tangible. It even gives you a base to work off of. It might seem tedious, but it also helps highlight another key element to Fullerton's approach, which is reminding the designer that a good game is more than the sum of its parts, something the player would be quick to remind you of. Uh, I do have a few complaints. One, the designer perspectives are interspersed as sidebars, and while informative, it makes them really hard to read. Two, and this is something the sidebars make obvious that Fullerton doesn't stress enough, is just how much form follows function. Uh, one of the quotes that stood out to me the most was from Richard Garfield, one of the creators of Magic the Gathering, <laughs> um, who noted that early on he made the design decision to allow the so-called creation of degenerate decks to continue. And as a player, it's easy to see how this decision really influenced how the game is played, i.e. it encourages the use of RIDICULOUS combinations of cards as long as you win, and it appeals to players who think this way. Yeah, that would include me. Uh, the play-centric approach encourages sitting back and letting players do their own thing, but it is up to the designer to curb that before you go to market. Uh, speaking of which, when it comes to marketing, the book is just a little outdated. The second edition that I read was published in 2008, and it really sidelines the PC market. Uh, this means self-publishing, which continues to grow these days, doesn't present itself as an option, when in fact it just it's becoming ever more and more viable these days. Um, I would hope that any newer editions brought up options like Steam Greenlight, uh, mobile gaming, too, is just, like, it's not even there. This doesn't mean that the design and workshop methods don't apply, but that there are more options that don't appear in the book that considerations need to be made for. So, would I recommend this book? The answer would be yes, even though you might find yourself skimming over sections that explain what an objective is, you may never have had to organize a QA group or really thought about presenting a design document for anyone else to read, and if all you have is an elevator pitch, then there are a lot of questions to ask yourself in order um, to make your game a good one. I don't think everybody is going to need every single chapter in this book, because if you've never really thought about making a game, I don't see 
why you would pick it up in the first place, but it covers such like a big, broad range spectrum that I wouldn't be surprised if the wannabe game designer couldn't find at least like one useful thing in this book, even if it's learning from the mistakes of Richard Garfield.